Hello, my name is Chef Lois from Boma International Hospital College. And today we are going to be learning how to make tea scones. This is a very simple recipe that you can use uh, your tea scones for either breakfast or you can serve them for high tea. High tea is usually served in the afternoons. So this you can also use them in the morning. So um, my ingredients are already weighed. We have uh, all-purpose flour. Kindly when you're using uh, any, uh, when you're making your tea scones, avoid using uh, self-raising flour. If you're going to use self-raising flour, you're going to omit the baking powder. So I already have the all-purpose flour. I have baking powder, caster sugar. You can use either caster sugar or icing sugar, depending on the one that you have. Then I have butter. This is uh, butter, but unsalted butter. In case you use uh, salted butter, try and omit uh, the salt. So I have a bit of salt, which I'm going to be using also to flavor a bit uh, my, my scones. Then I have raisins, which have been roughly chopped. And I have, uh, this is lemon zest. And uh, I've put a bit of a twist in my scones. What I've done, I'm introducing natural yogurt or sour cream. Now it is important um, when you're you, when you're baking, you understand the ingredients that you're using. The reason why I've put sour cream or uh, natural yogurt is because natural yogurt, the acidity of the natural yogurt is going to counteract with the baking powder and it's going to make your product a bit fluffy and soft. So that is why I'm using that. For the equipment that I'm going to be using, I will need um, a flour sieve. The flour sieve is going to help me to aerate and to remove any particles that are not needed from the flour. Then I am going to have a scraper. I already have a plastic scraper or a rubber scraper. Both are very good when you're making your dough. A palette knife, which I'm going to be uh, using to remove uh, my product. This is a pastry brush. Uh, you can either use the pastry brush for egg washing because you're going to be egg washing our product before we put it in the oven, or you can use it to apply a bit of butter on your baking sheet. This is a baking sheet that has already uh, been uh, greased and we've dusted a bit of flour in it. And then uh, here I have a rolling pin. You can use any type of rolling pin that you have. Um, I prefer what I'm holding right now because it's, uh, you can use it for any purpose in the kitchen. And then I have a cutter. So you can either use the serrated one or you can use this one. So uh, basically that is what we need and you need an oven. For this so uh, i'm going to preheat my oven to 160 degrees celsius for as as i start to prepare make sure that your oven is preheated so that uh, your products can bake properly so i will move to the oven preheat it and then we can begin so um preheat your oven to 160 degrees celsius degrees celsius kindly if you have fahrenheit then you have to uh, convert it to to suit what you want now for the flour you can see I have extra flour the extra flour I'm going to be using for dusting my product I have an egg wash this is just one egg one egg what you do is you beat it completely and you can add a few drops of water that is going to help it uh, to ensure that uh, your egg uh, is not too thick and you can use it for uh, to apply or to wash your product so very fast we are going to sieve our flour what I'm going to do I'm going to put the flour and the baking powder together your flour and your baking powder together just sift them remember you're trying to remove any impurities So I have my mixture here of baking powder and flour. Now I'm going to add the icing, uh, the, the either icing sugar or caster sugar. We said it's fine. So I'm going to put this. This is around uh, with my recipe. Uh, my flour is around 225 grams of flour. My baking powder is around 13 grams, and then my sugar is around 85 grams. I have the butter. 
I said you use unsalted butter. This is unsalted butter, but I'm going to be putting a pinch of salt. Remember, salt helps a baked product to bring out the flavor of the ingredients you're using. So we are going to be using uh, a bit of salt to do the same. So add this to your ingredients, dry ingredients. Remember that uh, for pastry, you have to be very precise. We are going, you have to weigh every ingredient that you're going to be using. This is uh, zest, lemon zest. I've used the local lemons, so you can either use the local lemons or you can use the imported lemons, depending on what you have. The salts don't put a lot. I'm going to do a pinch, which is around 2.5 to 3 grams. Then at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a rubbing method. And that is why I have the gloves, because of handling of the flour. Rubbing method. Rubbing method is where you're using your tips. Your tips and you're trying to rub the dry ingredients with the butter. That is what we call a rubbing method. Now when you're making your scones, one of the things that you need to... No, is that uh, you should not overmix your dough. Don't overmix your dough. So I'm going to mix this, and I think my my dough is getting ready. It looks sort of like crumbs, crumbs, because of the mixture of the butter and the flour and the dry ingredients. Remember, I'm not using any egg. I know some recipes um, you use eggs. This is a classic English tea scones. We are not using any eggs. You can see the way my mixture is getting to crumbs because of the rubbing, meaning that uh, all the butter and the dry ingredients are mixed together. At this point, I'm going to add the raisins Remember, we've roughly chopped them. Just roughly chop them. And then at this point, I'm going to add the yogurt. This is around 150 ml yogurt. Natural yogurt. If you don't get natural yogurt, you can use uh, sour cream. So at this point, I just want to mix them a bit before I start kneading. We said you don't over mix. That means when you're kneading it, you're not going to over knead it. So at this point, Plastic scraper is going to help. And I want to use my hands to make sure that all the ingredients are mixed together. Now, you need to have a clean surface. A clean surface because this we have to transfer here. Knead it a bit to make sure that all ingredients are mixed together before we start rolling it out and cutting it, shaping it and putting it in the oven. That is the importance of a rubber scraper or a plastic scraper if you have. As we said, don't over mix. So at this point, just put enough flour on the surface because now we need to roll out our dough. 
Now, if, if you have enough time, you can let your dough rest, but we don't need to let it rest. This is just fine. We can still uh, bake it. You can still put it in the fridge if you want it to rest a bit in the fridge. But uh, this one you can bake directly, so it is fine. So with a rolling pin, we are going to roll out this. We don't want it too thin. We want at least to make it into a thickness of two centimeters. Two centimeters. We say don't over mix your dough. You don't want it rubbery. Make sure that uh, your baking tray has been greased, otherwise they are going to stick. You don't want them sticking. So we cut them out. 